watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. I'm here with Julian James and the Love Bombs. Introduce yourselves. I'm Trevor. I'm Julian. Josh. Yay! <laughs> no, you guys were so great tonight. This was only like, what, one of, a handful of shows. You you had your first show like a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, we've done a we've done a couple. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still fairly fairly new. Getting uh, getting the nerves out and starting to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about how you guys came together as a band? For sure. Um, <clears throat> well, I wrote some songs, uh, you know, over the past 10 years and uh, had some downtime with COVID and uh, kind of finished them and um, decided it was finally time to do the inevitable and start a band. And um, yeah, just kind of uh, everything just happened super organically, um, reaching out to other musicians and people in the industry. Um, Trevor came referred by uh, Davey Warsop from Sharp Shock, and uh, he used to run the, the recording studio at Hurley. Um, and uh, I checked out Trevor's like Instagram page and stuff. I knew he played in DI, and so I knew he could shred. Um, but I also uh, I saw on his page him playing like Lucinda Williams songs and Justin Towns Earl and stuff. And that's, I mean, in a guitar player, that's been so hard to find as someone that's that versatile and and you know um can play punk and uh but also has that kind of feel and, and ability to kind of go a little bit outside of that too so yeah. super stoked and then josh also came uh very organically kind of through uh my little brother and um you know i had met him when they were living together up here in la and uh and i knew he was a great musician and um I think, uh, did you hit, did you, you hit me up? Yeah. Well, he was like, uh, he's like looking for drummers and bassists. And I was leaving a band that I was in for a while out in LA called the Jacks. And, um, and I was living with Johnny, his younger brother. And I was like, Oh, I'll hit up Julian. And I did. And now we're playing some shows and it's yep. fun. <laughs> it's awesome. Trevor, you, um, I've interviewed you before in your other band, DI, and then you're playing with the Drowns now, also part-time, part, part -time, like a fill-in with the Drowns. Yeah, every once in a while, when, yeah. I, when I can. Yeah, that was fun seeing you guys. I was like, what are you doing? Like, I remember we ran into each other backstage, and I was like, what band did I interview you in? <laughs> I forgot. He, he so. gets around. Yeah. And then Try I saw that. Busy. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, Trevor, you're everywhere, damn it. <laughs> so I saw the, that was how I found out about you guys because I saw your Instagram and you were posting about your first shows. And I was like, oh, you're playing with them now. And this, I feel like this has been really long awaited because for everyone that doesn't know, your dad is Mike Ness from Social Distortion. Right. So yeah. it's like, why aren't you like you've always played you played yeah. with you played with um jade jackson mm -hmm. you were touring with her yeah and you know i first met you through our mutual friend dave and then mm -hmm. seeing you on stage at social distortion shows yeah you know your dad would always bring you up for a song it's my baby boy yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i mean it was uh kind of like a almost an expectation i mean i remember people pulling me uh at social d shows when i was like five six years old saying you know you got to carry the torch and so it was kind of like a lifelong expectation and kind of pressure some i put on myself and and some outward pressure also but uh i'm also very easily distracted and talked myself out of, of 
doing this for you know probably 10 years some of the songs we played tonight i wrote when i was you know 15 and um so yeah long overdue but uh i'm also really grateful for how it's just like all happened and uh it's it's the perfect time to do it so super yeah. stoked yeah <laughs> actually open for social d last night yeah which is crazy out at the house of blues in anaheim yeah and that's always a that's always a trip because you know between it's that anaheim house of blues is in a different place now it used to be downtown disney um yeah. but uh but i mean between the house of blues anaheim and the house of blues sunset i mean i i really grew up in in that backstage area you know and to kind of go full circle and be playing there opening up for social d was like super super special moment for yeah. sure yeah yeah i did see your first uh post on instagram of the band's page was that you know like you said this is something that has been like 10 years in the making and that it's you're you're terrified about it probably yeah. because of that like you must feel that immense pressure of like oh hey um dad's an icon don't suck mm -hmm. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right. no pressure right, right for sure I think I think what's kind of helped that is like, you know, there's always going to be comparisons no matter what, you know, there's going to be people comparing us. But um, and there's always going to be influence. Like I said, I grew up in at the House of Blues watching them play night after night. So there's a, there's a ton of influence there, of course. But uh, I think the songs speak for themselves and kind of separate us from that. Um, and that's kind of like helped alleviate some of that because we're not trying to be social D we're, we're doing our own thing you know and yeah. uh yeah hold on hold on you feel like let me go just keep holding on talk about um you know how your dad has helped shape you and then and some of your guys musical influences because now that you know mike is, is producing he produced jay jackson i was watching mm -hmm. an interview on that today of just she was talking about how he kind of helped mold her yeah and so have you guys had any of that with you you do have um some music that you've been recording has he been hands-on or just what have you learned from him and who are some of your guys musical influences yeah i mean um he's he definitely helped me uh i because really i had i had a bunch of songs that i played on my couch in my living room on acoustic guitar you know and i really didn't even know if they were very good and so um once i finished them all i took them to him and and he's like i these are these are really good you know and he gave me some some feedback and some suggestion as well and um and I actually, for the demos, uh, borrowed his band, Social D, to, to kind of minus him. We kicked him out, but <laughs> no, he was uh, he was producing and overseeing everything, and uh, and we got some really killer uh, live recorded demos and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, his I I take everything he says, you know, I don't take it lightly. Um, he's not only a great performer, but a great songwriter and. Uh, he helped me immensely. of your guys musical influences um I, I mean when whenever people say like oh i listen to everything i really hate that response but yeah. yeah like i mean i dive in a lot of genres but like growing up and like skateboarding a ton like i would say like skate video soundtracks definitely 
molded a lot of my music taste. So I like, can see that you look like you belong in like the Dogtown movie <laughs> with the Lords of Dogtown. But, <laughs> like, but like, like a lot of post punk, <laughs> a lot of like old school punk. But like, The Smiths, Joy Division, The Cramps, like the cure i don't know just like a lot of post-punk stuff that's like what i was listening to a lot and then also like my dad got me super stoked on like the stones and stuff like that so kind of like a melting pot of a lot of different stuff but um i don't know i kind of just like at the end of it it's just like if i feel something listening to a song i don't care what the genre is and that's like what i follow so yeah if a, regardless of the genre if i feel something when listening to it i'm gonna dive in be stoked so, for sure yeah. i feel that too like punk rock will always be home base for me but i do like to, to yeah. branch out of it yeah <laughs> so i would say that's probably like my influences i guess yeah what about you probably mostly punk to be honest yeah i mean i like so much different kind of music like i know it's you know typical but like i really do listen to a lot of stuff but like at the end of the day it's pretty much mostly punk like old school punk and then you know a lot of country and like americana kind of stuff and yeah you find all the bands that like kind of cross over you know like social distortion for one x like blasters all the kind of bands that do both and then you know they kind of have their you know kind of kind of doing a little bit of everything and like it's a perfect mix of like all the stuff i like and for know. sure but at the end of the day it's probably mostly punk yeah i could see that I see it. And then for you, obviously, aside from your dad, who were some of your other musical influences? Uh, so I had like early influences from my mom. Like, you know, she used to clean the house listening to Lucinda Williams and stuff like The Cure and The Smiths. And um, and then my dad uh, going over to his house, he had an old jukebox with a bunch of old country, Hank Williams and Buck Owens and uh some of those guys and then kind of when i got older i got super into punk and you know the pistols and hearing that record for the first time was crazy and the clash and um you know a lot of straight rock and roll stuff too the stones i got super into and then i was like i wanted to figure out who they were listening to and who they were inspired by so you know got into the delta blues and you know robert johnson and muddy waters and all that stuff so um but yeah similar to josh i mean a, a, if a song's good and makes you feel a certain way that's what it's about you know yeah for sure <laughs> talk about um you getting sober you got sober before you were before you were even 21 <clears throat> yeah yeah i um i got into some trouble you and you mentioned uh, off camera like i was talking <laughs> about that night when we were at the chain reaction with our friend dave yeah and you were like oh yeah that's right when i got out of jail yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i fuck? got into uh got into a little trouble and got arrested like a week after my 18th birthday and um got out when i was 19 and uh and just decided, you know, I knew where I was going and it wasn't, it wasn't going to be good, uh, doing what I was doing. Um, and, uh, I just decided to kind of give it a shot and super, super glad I did, you know, and the path hasn't been linear, but, um, overall, yeah, I mean, it, it needed to happen for sure. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're going down a dark path like that and getting into trouble, then sometimes it's just like somebody pull, pull the switch. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, so I watching some of the, the videos you, are you still doing the YouTube channel with the girl? What was her name? Tara Connor? Yeah, no, that was kind of a, that was like a few month period, uh, working with her and, and, a foundation to kind of like, uh, just help kind of spread awareness and reduce the stigma on addiction and and recovery yeah i i liked a lot of the videos um just talking about like what to do like you had a guest on um 
uh, a guy and he was talking about what to do if, if your children are kind of going down that path and getting into drugs of like, hey, don't freak out and how some of these, and then, you know, health insurances, how it's, that some people can't get treatment right away. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, there's a very small window when someone says that they want to get help for an addiction before that window right, closes. Right, for sure. And just like the health insurance industries and, and all of those things. It was, it was interesting to me. I yeah. Mean, yeah, for sure. It's I mean, it's a whole crazy world, you know, of people trying to get help and even people with that do have, you know, good insurance, like they don't give a fuck about about you. They don't want to they want you to do, you know, 30 days and be cured, you know, and yeah. so it's hard. It's it's tough. But um, but yeah, that's actually what I do when I'm not playing music I'm full time uh, drug and alcohol counselor. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that for you do you ever um take some of that home i mean it's when you work in a field like that it, do you have to have some level of detachment with it or yeah you do i, I mean <clears throat> it's hard because you want to show up for the people who need help you know but you also um can get easily burnt out and, and fatigued kind of uh and just kind of drained you know um but uh but I try to separate the two as much as I can um, and just try to show up every day and, and be of service to them and try yeah. to, you know, if I can change the course of one person's life, then that's worth it, you know? For sure, for sure. And then, like you said, show up and then for your for your beautiful family when you come yeah. home. Yeah, for sure. Your little son, yeah. your beautiful girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very cute. Um, so what's let's talk about what's coming up for the band obviously being a new band you you don't even have music out on the streaming services yet yeah. like you said you just did the demos so what else is coming up more shows and then yeah right now i think what we want to do is just really um work on building kind of like a local following california following mm -hmm. and kind of just play shows and play music you know that's really what we want to do but uh hopefully in the next year get into the studio and, and do a record with these guys and um yeah super excited for that um but yeah play some shows we just got a a booking agent stormy um yeah, that's a and big she's, one yeah she's she was like my dream like my number one like reach for the stars you know yeah. what i mean but stormy and, uh, raps doesn't she does the interrupters she does rancid is that correct yeah yeah she has a yeah. huge huge roster um but she's they're independent uh booking agent and uh and yeah i couldn't be couldn't be more happy so i think she's uh working on pitching us for some tours for next year and yeah yeah we just want to play as much as possible and well, do a congratulations. record congratulations that is a big deal i saw that in the bio and i was like is that the same one of like yeah, yeah. they're big yeah so, yay, congratulations guys thank you that's thank gonna you. i think I mean, all of you guys, being a new band, you're all very seasoned musicians, and I think that that shows in your in your live set um, that you know you know what you're doing despite being a new band. Right, right. Thank you. So appreciate that. face that of you know that people think oh you're just being handed these things because of because of having certain connections um i don't really know <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay, sure well, i'm sure some some people do you know but okay um, well as your band launches and people yeah people do put, no, the, I'm put sure. the dots together I'm what would sure. you say to those people that are going to say that you know I mean, it was handed to you i don't know i mean you can there is a, a huge element of like who you know, but I mean, if you fucking suck, you suck, <laughs> you know? And uh, I, think, I think the music speaks for itself, you yeah, know? For That's sure. the number one thing, you know? Like for if sure. you suck, you suck. And but there's gonna, a lot of bands that suck. You're gonna fizzle out stuff. pretty quick, you know? 
Yeah, but there are a lot of musicians that unfortunately fucking suck and it's just like how are they getting these shows how are they getting these deals and then they're terrible yeah the f i mean the flip side to that is there's a lot of like really great bands who just never really get that break you yeah. know um yeah. a ton you see it all the time for sure was well, there anything else that you guys want to share that's coming up uh let's see we got um we got a few more sh shows with social d um Belasco in LA. Um, oh, you're playing that one. Yay. Yeah. And then uh, Vegas, Mandalay Bay, House of Blues. Um, we got San Diego. What is it? The North Park Observatory. And uh, and then we got a show with uh, the crowd, actually, on uh, January 16th at the Wayfair. Okay. Wait, who is the crowd again? Uh, the crowd, they're, I mean, they've been around for a while. Jeff, I know the Jeff name. Jeff Malucky's in the band. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, why? I old know school the... OC punk. Yeah, okay. super, super old school. Yeah. Yeah. For So that, that reminds me of something I did want to ask for everyone watching. Like, can you describe you guys being Orange County punk rockers? You know, I've lived in L.A. for 15 years now, and I remember my first punk shows were all the OC ones because I moved to L.A. Bef before I was 21. And that was mm -hmm. where I had to go because you couldn't go to the L.A. shows. They, they were 21 plus. And so I would always go out to O.C. And it was it's a special thing there of like the Orange County punk scene. Can you describe it for people that maybe aren't familiar? I think I don't know. It's a combination of things. I think it's a combination of like uh, the it's such an eclectic group of, of people in Orange County, you know, Um <laughs> But it's also there's so much history there and culture, yeah. you know what I mean, from the Hispanic Chicano scene and, you know, it kind of all comes together in, at the punk rock shows. Like you'll see the fucking weirdest people ever yeah. there and everyone's getting along and it's cool, you know what I mean? And that's what that's what it's about. And that's what I think makes Orange County punk so, so special. Yeah, it's definitely a different vibe than like the L.A. punk shows. I mean, mostly now I go to the L.A. ones just because they're closer. Right. Um, but it, it's like every time I go to Orange County, it's 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 different. Everyone turns <laughs> up too. I feel like the energy is like unmatched at Orange County shows. <laughs> not to not to hate on LA, but uh. yeah, I mean that too. And then one thing that I did always used to notice, which really bothered me and made me feel alarmed, was that unfortunately there's like still Nazi punks in Orange County. Yeah, and that's something that you don't really ever fucking see in LA. Yeah, that's true. So. That's that's kind of a kind of a bummer <laughs> it is it really is it's like can, it's like this, why is this a thing still i think it's uh i think it's fizzling out like i remember seeing it a lot more 10 years ago yeah there was a um, big group of them and they'd always be at the show for sure and like they, they'd be standing out front and like they were just there to fuck shit up and cause trouble. yeah 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 that's always a bummer because that's i mean to me that's just all fear-based and like identity crisis you know what i mean yeah yeah well i'm gonna close with that and say thank you guys for taking the time tonight thank Appreciate you so it. much thank you, thank you. Okay. we're julian james and the love bombs and you're watching last rockers tv <laughs>